Hello and welcome to the Sub1 YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video, part 11 of Spot Micro, we're going to start looking at kinematics. Now kinematics comes in two varieties, uh, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. And in this video, we're going to be looking at forward kinematics. The next video, we'll look at inverse kinematics and the one after that, will be speed control so as to produce straight line movements. So in forward kinematics, what we're trying to achieve is working out the position of the leg uh, or the foot relative to the robot, knowing the position of each of the servos that we're using. In the case of Spot Micro, we have a shoulder joint that moves up and or swings out so it will move the leg in the x-axis as well as the z-axis to a point then we have the arm joint which will move the foot backwards and forwards and we have the wrist which will move in the z-axis as well as the y-axis and using a combination of those we can calculate out where this foot is in relation to the robot. The easiest way to do this is to start with working at the distance between this point and this point. Now I would like to make a note that it is very important that we get the calibration of these servos correct within my robot lab and to that end you'll see I've put masking tape on the sides of the robot and put in markings that line up with the joints. So this is the pivot point, and this line, while it's not true to the leg, is true to the center of the wrist, and that's the one I'm working with. We're also working, you'll see a line down here, and that's our center line for lining up this one. Okay, so let's work through a few things that we're going to be looking at in our program. So in our program, we're going to use a number of variables, including the length between the shoulder. So the center line of this shoulder uh, level with the pivot point to the foot. So uh, that'll be called LSF. We've got the length between the shoulder pivot point here and the foot. Uh, which is length top to foot or LTF. Um, now stored in variables we can modify if we change dimensions anywhere. We have got the offset between the shoulder pivot point and the center line of the leg at the top of the arm. So LST. We have the length between this pivot point and the wrist down the bottom here, uh, LTW, and between the wrist and the foot, which is LWF. And these are stored in the program. Okay, when we're looking at the program, uh, and this program is stored on the GitHub, there is a link to it in the description below along with links to the discord channel for this channel and also a link to the patreon account okay starting at the top we've got my standard header uh, and we're going to import maths because one of the things we need to do with this is a lot of trigonometry so the maths functions are required for this to work I've made a note in here on the variables that we will be using. So LWF, LTW, LST. Two other variables that are important to note are LYS, and that's the length from the center of the robot to the shoulder pivot joint uh, in both the Y axis and in the X axis. In our functions, we're going to pass in which the actual positions of each of the servos as part of the inputs to those functions. We're also going to pass in the leg number. So starting at zero, we have 
the front left, then front right is one, back left is two, and back right is three. So again, I've listed that in the program. Then we pass in these three servo positions. Now we can pull that out of my robot lab without too much hassle. Uh, so we've got the shoulder, the arm and the wrist, so shoulder, arm and wrist. And this applies to all of the legs. The only difference is uh, our output might need to be inverted a little bit, but we'll do that in our output stages. The first measurement we really need to work out is this LTF, the length between the top of the arm and the foot. So we're actually going to proceed with trying to find the Y axis first, because it doesn't matter where the shoulder is. As long as the arm and the wrist are known, that foot we can calculate out the Y axis. And once we know the Y axis, then we can calculate out the other two quite easily. So we're going to start with working that out using the square root of the square of the length between the wrist and the foot and the length between the top of the arm and the wrist. So square both of those together, add them together and then subtract off that two times the length of the wrist and the foot times the length of the top and the wrist times the cosine of this wrist joint angle. Now one of the things to be aware of is in my robot lab and all the other programming that we've done this wrist joint is in degrees. Python however likes everything in radians so we are going to convert it to radians with this function maths.radians and that will convert the wrists which is in degrees into radians to apply to the cos or the cosine and that will give us a length now that we have that length which is our, the length between the top and the foot we're going to calculate out this angle in here and that's if you draw a line between the foot and the pivot point on the arm you've got an angle there and that's the angle we need to work out next and we're going to call that angle foot wrist again we're using maths so we're going to convert that back to uh, degrees and we're going to use a cos which is sort of the opposite of cosine we're going to pass in the square square of the length ltf so the length between the top and the foot which we just calculated out in the previous step plus the length of the top to the wrist squared minus the length of the wrist to the foot squared and then we'll divide that by two times the length TF and length TW. And that will give us this angle in here. Now that becomes important when we start to take this shoulder into account. Now the formula changes a little bit around depending on which leg we're working on. So if we're working on the front, we're going to take the LTF times the maths, so a maths function, the sine of the arm minus the AFW, so that was that uh, angle we just calculated out, minus 90 to get us in the right angle orientation. And then to that, we're going to add the length of the, from the center of the robot to the center of the shoulder. And that'll give us where this joint is here in the Y axis. If we're working on the back legs, it's the same formula, but in this case, we're subtracting that distance off because this is in relation to the center of the robot. Okay, so that's our our first one, we now know the y-axis of where this foot is based on two of these joints. Remember arm here, 
is coming from what we passed in. LTFA is the link between the center of the shoulder joint and this foot in the Z axis. So it's important that we actually know that one. It's actually from this point here, so with that offset, and we just needed to know how far that is down in the Z axis. So that's what LTFA is. And we, it actually gets its name from the length between the top and the foot on the adjacent when looking at this from the XZ axis. So we're looking at this length, this length from here to here. And that's the cosine of the angle of the arm minus, sorry, the angle in here minus the angle of the arm minus 90 times LTF. So LTF is the length from here to here. So where sine gave us the length coming this way, cosine gives us the length going down. Once we have that, between here and the center point of the shoulder, and then coming down this way, is a right angle triangle. And we need to calculate out this angle here to here. So from the center of the shoulder pivot to the bottom of the foot. And we call that LSF, length shoulder foot. And this one's a, a very simple formula. You will should remember this one from school, and that is the square square root of this square between the shoulder and the top and the square that we calculated out for uh, LTFA and that will give us this length from the pivot point down to the foot which we'll we call LSF again depending on which leg you're working on so it's left or right basis this time. Working on the uh, on X, we're using an inverted here because it's on. We're working on this one with zero and two. For one and three, we'll be working on this side. Since this is going to be positive, I'm just going to go through. It's the same thing, but we're changing signs around and adding and subtracting differently based on which side of the robot it's on. So we're working out the sine of the following formula, which is a cos. So we're working at an angle LST divided by LSF. So LST length between here and the shoulder. LSF the length between here and here. And that'll give us an angle in that. We're then adding in the shoulder angle converted to radians and that's coming from the servo passed in at the start of the function then we're multiplying it by LSF that's the length of the foot and that gives us this length between here and the center of the shoulder add in LXS which is the length between the center line of the robot and the center line of the shoulder and that'll give us our offset in total in the case of the other side, we're actually subtracting that off and all of our angles work to a negative value. So we actually start with a negative value. Z is the height from here down and it works exactly the same way. Because this is going to be at an angle, the height that this will be will be determined partly by the position of all three joints. Since we've already worked out two of them, we can now use the formula maths.cos. So we're going to work out the cosine of the angles formed by LST and LSF, and then add in the radians of the shoulder angle in degrees. So, and multiply all of that by LSF to get the height. There are no other modifiers in this case with the height but that then returns the height. We then put all of those into a dictionary and return those back, which makes it easy to pull information out. 
Okay, so that's the first part. And it is very, very much maths heavy on this section. It will be on the next section as well, unfortunately. But that's uh, kinematics for you. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. It's a form of support that doesn't cost you anything, but does help the channel a great deal. There is a Discord channel that you can join, and there will be a link in the description so you can join the growing community there. And if you'd like to help the channel further, I do have a Patreon account. Uh, you can join my Patreons, VIPs, Go Lucky and Lorenz Berger, and my Builder Patreons, Elmerales45 and Ratchet. And we'll see you in the next video.